In this video, I'm going to break down the user interface of Rapid API Client, the Visual Studio Code extension. When you click on the Rapid API icon in the VS Code sidebar right here, it will open a menu. The menu is divided into three sections. The first section is responsible for managing your projects. The second handles all your environments. And the third is where all your API requests are present. After opening Rapid API Client for VS Code extension, you will see that there are three icons at the top right here. The first one lets you create different projects. It helps you separate your API requests on a project basis. The default project is local. The second icon opens a pop-up to sign you in the Octopaw, like I'm receiving this message, the extension Rapid API Client wants to sign in using Octopaw. I'm going to click Allow and then click Open. After this, this pop-up box appears in my browser. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code.app and now click open again. This message that you're signed and can start syncing to Rabbit API appears, which indicates that I'm signed in. Once you're signed in, you can sync your new projects with Octopore as soon as you create them. This will help you test your APIs from any computer. The third icon provides a walkthrough that will help you get started with the extension. The second section is the environment section. There are two options in this section. The first option adds a new group and the second option manages the existing groups. Now try clicking on the manage button. It will open a new tab that will contain all the groups. You can change the group's name from here and add some environment variables. Request section is the third section. You will see three vertical dots in front of the request heading. Go ahead and click on it. It will open a menu that shows two options. That is new request and new group. The new request option will create a request under the request heading. Like let's click this and I'm getting this default request. And similarly, if you click on the new group option, it will create a new group that can now group together different API requests. After creating a new request, it will open a new tab that contains different options related to making an API request. It will also open an API response viewer on the right side. At the top of the request tab, you will see a drop down menu that contains eight HTTP methods like get, head, post, put, patch, delete, trace, and options. These methods are used to make an HTTP request to the API. Besides it, there is an input box where you write down the API you want to test. Lastly, there is the send button alongside this input box to call the API. Under the request method, the API input box and the send button, you will find another layout that contains multiple sections. The first is the description section that lets you give your API request a name and some description. Here you're going to type your, uh, the name of your API request and here the description. The description box supports markdown. You can format your text accordingly. After description, you will see a headers section beside it. When you click on it, the UI will change. The new UI will let you add header values to your request. You can add as many header values as you need. The next is the query section where you can add all your API request query parameters. The body section will let you add a body to your API request. For this, you have multiple ways to format your request body. For instance, you can add it as a pure text. There is the JSON, JSON tree format. You can also use GraphQL form uh, URL encoded and multipart to write the body. Auth is the last section of this layout and which contains the authorization keys for the API. You can set the authorization to none, basic, where you provide username and password, OAuth1, OAuth2, and so on. At the bottom of the request tab, you will see a request snippet section right here. This section can generate the code snippet for calling your provided API. There are three options here. The first one is this drop down menu. To select the programming languages you want to get the code snippet, the second is option is the closing tag option right here. Uh, that creates a new file and adds the selected language code snippet to it. And lastly, the third icon copies the code snippet to your clipboard. Now let's go ahead and make an API request. For that, I'm going to use this URL rapidapi.com slash learn slash API slash rest. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. 
I'm going to select the get method and click send button. When you make an API request, the extension will show you the status code that it received from the response. If the request is successful, you will see a 200 status code here. Under the status code, you will see three sections that is the info, request and response. Under the info section, all the information related to the API request will be listed including the date and time the API request was made, URL, status, response time and so on. The request section includes information related to the API, headers and body. It will be empty if you have made a plain API request only with the endpoint without anything else. And finally, you can see the response the API has brought along in this response section. You can look at the response header and check out the response in various formats including plain text, JSON tree, JSON text, image, hex, web and raw. At the bottom of this UI is an option to generate the type definition of response in other languages. Right now, the extension supports three languages that is TypeScript, Swift and Python. By clicking this drop down menu, you're getting these three languages. I'm going to click TypeScript and here I'm going to click this tag uh, that will generate type export. And this is the response I'm getting in TypeScript. Similarly, let's go ahead and check the response in Python. I'm going to click it this again and this is the response in Python language. And lastly, I'm going to click Swift and generate the type export and this is uh, what the response looks like in Swift. Similarly, by clicking this icon, I can ex uh, copy the type export to the clipboard.